have you ever beaten a liar in court? I beat my ex-husband at his own game during our divorce proceedings. My ex had taken my cash to pay for things throughout our marriage and was racking up credit cards in his name, which I didn't know about. So it looked like he had all the debt and I hadn't contributed financially. He intended to stick me with half of the credit card debt, which was a lot, 30k, or more. I didn't even know about this until the day of court and it was things that I had paid for to counter his credit card debt. I had the house note. I got an inspection on a realtor who gathered info as to what houses were selling for in my area. He also had an inspection. I knew he would try to say the house was worth more than it was. I had the realtor show up as a witness. This weighed in more than his one inspection appraisal. He knew the realtor. He hated her because she was my friend. Her presence shook him up quite a bit and made him uneasy. I could see it. I didn't even count on the so bonus for me. Plus I had a written inspection myself. These two things counted his inspection. Next, I made a list of all the household things he took with him, which far outweighed the items that were left. I assigned monetary values to them. His assets far outweighed mine. Not only was his list more in value, but his list took up two pages. Mine took up one quarter of a page. This alone created an image in the attorney's mind of how things were skewed. He claimed he wanted joint custody over and over. I knew this was for monetary reasons to not pay child support, otherwise why not go for primary custody? So knowing this, during mediation, I finally said if he insisted on joint custody, I would refuse it and give him primary custody. I would take weekends. I would be the fun parent. He could take off work every time the kid was sick and couldn't go to school, every time our child had a day off school, and every summer he could find daycare all week. He would be responsible for homework, getting him to bed early and getting him to school every day, and then finding someone to pick him up from school and watch him until my ex got home from work from 3 semicolon 5 o'clock Monday through Friday. Well he hadn't thought about all that. Once I put my foot down in mediation and said I either got primary custody or he did and I wouldn't budget. Within a week I got a letter from his attorney. He had conceded to me having primary custody. At first, they tried to call my bluff. Even the mediator looked at me in horror and said you wouldn't give up your son, you love him too much. I said exactly, I do love him too much. How can I get along with this man I'm divorcing to joint raise a son? We have completely different parenting styles. If I could get along with him to co-raise my son, we would still be married. I love my son enough to know that going back and forth yo-yoing between two households and raising a son in two different ways is much worse for him than letting him be raised by his dad. So if he feels that strongly to raise him, then I concede he can raise him and I will take the fun weekends running around to Chuck E. Cheese and amusement parks, staying up late sleeping in with our pajamas on all morning. That sounds good to me. They were speechless. They knew I meant it, and I did. But then my ex wasn't physically aggressive to our child, so I could risk this. The slight possibility that I was wrong, and he would go for the primary custody. However, I knew he didn't want custody to the odds were in my favor. I was able to play that card. Our case went to court, we were in a room with our attorneys waiting to be called our turn. We had agreed on custody, and now it was about the house and the settlement money we were debating because you can still resolve it before appearing before the judge. Well, I started telling stories about our true life every time any question was asked. Looking directly at my ex, portraying the victim I truly was. Do you have the receipt for this? Then my answer would be well, I don't have those papers. Remember when you left me that one day with no notice whatsoever? You pulled up in a O hall, and to my horror, you proceeded to leave me. And then once I realized what was going on, I wanted to talk about it and try and work things out. But no, you were busy emptying the house that day. You decided all that stuff in the house was yours, leaving me with not even a bed to sleep on. You took those receipts and papers with you since they were in our desk you took. So no, unfortunately, I don't have all these paper trails that you seem to have accumulated in preparation for today, a day you sure seem to know would arrive so you could properly prepare for it. So now I've not only answered why I don't have the receipt for something, but I've also painted a picture of a moment when I was victimized and how he was calculating about our divorce, which he was three birds with one stone. And the thing is, he didn't deny anything. And occasionally when he did, it was an afterthought too late. One time he denied something falsely. He was starting to see my strategy. So then I looked at him sadly and said, wow, you are going to sit here and lie to me, to my face in front of our attorneys. I guess you really don't care anything about me, and maybe you never did. You have a great job, that pays well. You have all the stuff we bought together during our relationship. You wanted custody of our son, and now you've decided you also want the computer. The computer I need for our son to do his homework on. The computer I can't afford to replace, but you can. In addition to that list, I showed all the things you took that you already have in your possession. 
I would always look at him and talk like I was trying to reason with him. It worked really well. I didn't make it about my feelings toward him but rather how he felt about me and even our son. I was showing what a jerk he was and how mean he was. He didn't count on me to be so bold. I aired all his dirty laundry. Nothing was off limits. If he had hit me, which he didn't, I would have said, remember that time you hit me? I was lying on the ground bleeding in our living room, begging you to stop. You got mad at me because I was late getting home from work and you promised you wouldn't do it again. I believed you at that time, but now I don't believe you since you obviously hit me again and again. I know you're too easily capable of lying. I worked in so many things in addition to what was asked of me that his attorney ended up seeing from my point of view what and he was. She knew the judge was going to stick it to him. She stopped the negotiation, took him out of the room and came back with an offer to settle, which involved him losing and paying me money. He sat there and looked at her and said I didn't agree to this. She looked at him and said you better take it, it's in your best interest. 